Hello, I'm the Cicada, and I'm here in my creative building world. The house I'm going to be making for you guys today is this one. So this house is the culmination of a lot of my earlier modern styles. It has a lot of room, a lot of decoration, a lot of complexity, a lot of walk space, and a lot of beauty. So for the main structure, you're going to need white and gray concrete. Then, you're going to need two different types of wood that you're going to use in different contexts. So I suggest picking your favorite wood for the first wood and your not-so-favorite wood for the second wood. Then you're going to need polished andesite for the spots around the pool and a bit of lining around the house. Then you're going to need polished blackstone slabs for the roof, as you can see. Then you're going to need a bunch of stained glass and stained glass panes for the windows. Some lapis lazuli for parts inside the pool. A lighting block of your choice, I recommend glow shrooms for their efficiency and easiness to find. Some leaf blocks. And then a bunch of other decorations, pretty much of your choice. So, at the very front of the house, we're going to have a box out of the gray concrete that's 4 by 13. So we start 1, 2, 3, 4 on the front and go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then you can just fill in the rest. So, now at the front of our box, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks down. Then with our white concrete, we're going to go 10 blocks out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And to the left, we're going to take it 9 blocks, so including this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oopsies. And then over here, we're going to do 8 blocks, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now at this corner, we're going to start here with our gray concrete and go 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks to the left. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to this way and back 17 blocks, so including this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Whew, that's a mouthful. And then pull this across, and then finish the box. And fill in the inside too. Now at the very end of this, we're going to count 1, 2, 3 blocks on this gray concrete, and start with our white concrete, a box that's 8 by 12. So we're going to go up this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then back down. However, the inside of this, I'm going to be using my second wood, which is birch, and filling it in like so. So now at this corner here, we're going to be placing our first type of wood, which ironically, we're putting in second. So we'll put it here and go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 blocks, then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks, and bring around. Fill in the middle. So now, if we go right on the corner of this block and place a gray concrete, we're going to base this as the beginning of a box that's 4 by 16. So we're going to go down this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Pull it across by 1, 2, 3, 4, and fill the rest in. And once you're done with this, you have most of the gray concrete on the floor done. So, going back to the beginning of our area here, we're going to start a white concrete line on the corner of this gray concrete. So we're going to build out 7 blocks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, like so. Down 13, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the rest of this will be spruce planks, my first type of wood. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wide, and pulling it all the way back to that box over there. However, if I complete this box as intended, there's going to be a spot here that isn't filled in, and don't worry, we'll get to that. Because after all of this, we're going to fill in this spot with white concrete. Why did it extend awkwardly like this? Because when I was designing it, I forgot that it existed and I had to find some sort of solution to it, so I worked around my own mistakes. But the rest of this area you can just fill in with white concrete. So when you're getting to this part near the beginning, you're actually going to stop yourself because there's a bit more spruce that you had to put in. Right here on the corner, we're going to make a spot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 long by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 wide. I guess it would be 5 wide and 7 long, but don't hold me to that. And now you can fill in the rest with white concrete. So next, we're going to head over to our gray concrete boxes and start placing in our lighting blocks. I'm using glow shrooms because in survival mode, they're really easy to get and they look really good. I think it fits the house better than sea lanterns and especially glowstone. <laughs> so we're going to count just one block to the side and place our first block here then just go all the way down like this in a line. And the reason I'm not telling you an actual number of where to place it is because I didn't know one because all you have to do is line up with the side of this box. 
What will happen over here is that we're going to place the lanterns in the exact same way, and they're going to meet in the side and create a nice little box around the back of the house. And then we get this shape. So now for the rest of the lights, we're going to start on this corner by the spruce wood here, and go out one, two blocks this way, and then we're going to start back near this birch area, and bring it out to the same level. So just lining it up here, we're going to bring it down and connect this into its own little front yard garden area. So finally, with all that done, we are ready to start building our actual house. So what we're going to do now is build up our grey concrete sections, and this part on the outside and this part on the outside are both going to be 10 blocks tall, this block is only going to be 5. So first start here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, pull it back, build this part up, connect it across, do all, do all the box things, you know, and just fill the rest in. So now you'll have something like this, which we're going to repeat over here. So now we have these two very similar boxes on the outside, so let's go to the middle one now and build this up one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. And build this across, build it up, and build it back. So now with these two, we're going to leave the roof open for skylights, but with this one, we're going to fill it in. However, with these two, we're going to fill in both the sides, but leave the front completely open. And when you're done, it's going to look something like this on these two sides and that in the middle. And now on the outer edges up here, the sides facing the lamps, we're going to put a little window on the side two blocks from the top. So it should look something like this and then do it on the other one too. So now we have our three gray concrete boxes. They're all looking nice. They're all looking sleek. And they're going to be the big structures that we see first when watching the house. So let's move on to wood. Back in the spruce section over here, we're going to build it up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 blocks tall, and bring it across so it's just one block shorter than this big spot here. Now we're going to place we're going to place another column over here, one lining up with the wall. Then we're going to connect these together and estimate that the next column is going to be right here. So what you're going to imagine, even though these are connected, this is its own box, and this is its own box. And because of this, we're going to go over here and build us up one, two, three, four blocks, bring it across, build this one up as well, and bring it all the way back. And once we get back here, there's nowhere to put it, so we're just going to make a column right here and connect it across to this wall. Then we can fill in the other spot, and we can fill in this floor space over here, and we have a nice little deck area above this spot which we can then fill in this sideways and then fill in the rest of this block upwards like this. And this is all going to go up two blocks because we're going to have a window at the top that's two blocks tall. So the back wall should look something like this with the door frame off to the right side and a window up at the top. Then on this wall, we're going to take this line here and extend it this way, then fill in the rest with wood. We don't want any concrete peeking out the back. And then here, on the front, we're going to take this line up top and extend it out, making the window go all the way around the top. So we have this big window on the bottom and a big window on the top. Now up here, there's just this big spot right now, so I like putting some stairs on the side here, like so. And on the left side, we can just put some blocks, like that, you can remove this one if you want to. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. But now I know what you're thinking. Why? I can just fall over here. Why Why is this designed so poorly? Like, there's no space here to do anything. Well, this is why this little white concrete part comes in. So we're going to build this up one, two, three, four blocks. Build it across, and line it up with this column, and just bring it down. Perfect, right? Wrong! There's another space here. What are we going to do about that? Oh, we're just going to put some more concrete in. I have not gotten enough sleep. But basically, this is what this door frame should look like. It's just the gray concrete at the top, followed by this white concrete in the bottom, and it just makes a nice little frame. And to make it all top off, we're going to put some spruce on the left here, and another bit of white concrete here. And if you really want to go nuts, right here where this gray concrete cuts off, you can put a column just to ease the transition in. And then if you really want to, again, put another column down the middle to make this part look a little bit more supported. And once you walk down a hallway with more columns in it, it just looks nice and cozy. I butchered that sentence. Also, if we're feeling even crazier, here you have a smooth transition between the white concrete and the spruce wood, but it kind of feels out of place since this one is jagged. So you can put another column in here to make it a nice corner. 
instead of just weirdness. So now for the first time, we're gonna put some stairs in. So right here on this wall, we're going to put a gray concrete here, count one, two blocks over and put another one right here. You can put some stairs up here and you're thinking, wait, there's no door frame. Well, we can just make one. Make a three by two spot over here for a door frame. And over here lined up, you can put a nice little block cutting you off from the edge there. Top of the stairs, we can put some spruce wood, build it out another block or so, and then start putting your stairs going downwards going downwards and then you have a nice little staircase going into <gasps> no door oh well we can just make one now this door is off center i suggest going over to the other side first where this little opening is and making a door right in the middle and then you have the entrance staircase and the exit so we're going to start with white concrete now so let's go up one two three four five at this corner and then we're going to pull it back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blocks. So it's a little bit to the side of this overhang, or underhang, I guess. Then we're going to pull it back 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And it should line up right with this spruce wood. So now we're going to pull it back all the way to the other spot here with the gray concrete. Then we're going to pull it all the way along and all the stuff. And this is actually going to go a few blocks out, but we'll leave this part for later. For now, we're going to come back here and count from this corner, one, two, three, four. And on this one, we're going to pull another line back here. And then from the front corner, we're going to pull back one, two, three blocks out one, two, three, four, five blocks. So again, lined up with this line and then go all the way down to the ground. This is going to be our staircase area. So you can put some stair blocks right here. Some regular planks on the side. And then just like this, build your staircase down. One on the top, one on the bottom. And once you're done with that, you have another little staircase up to the top deck from the bottom. So now coming back to the first column we made, we're going to build another one, two, three, four blocks. So we're almost in line with the top of this gray concrete and pull it back on the same line. It should all be parallel. And at this corner, just build it up. Not like that, like this. Build it across, build it up, all that jazz. And here you think we build a column there, but we're actually going to count one, two, three blocks in and build it right on this fourth one. This just kind of spices it up and it makes it a little bit more interesting on the eyes. It's having a column in every single spot is a little bit abundant. This just makes it a little bit nicer for the eyes and now we can start and put in some more columns. So one right here. And of course we can start pulling this all the way back. And now we're going to start on this area. So first off, we're going to build a column on this corner here and build it up and this you would think would be the end but we're actually going to build out one two more blocks to the corner of this gray concrete area build it up all the way to the top and connect it here then we're going to build it across just above this line here but we're not going to connect down we're actually going to connect it back build another column up the column down and we're going to make this spot a bit wider two blocks to be in, to be exact and fill in the top, fill in the bottom, and we have a nice little tunnel. And we can actually fill in the side wall, leaving a two block space to get inside. And this is a little balcony area. Then on this wall, we're going to fill in the bottom here. So we have a nice little window, and on this spot, we're going to actually break these two blocks, build this up, and put in some staircases. We can actually use the blackstone slabs for this. I think that would be a, mu a much cleaner feel. And it would kind of like go into the gray concrete area, which sadly we don't have slabs of. So let's go over here now with the spruce wood. We're going to build this up one, two, three, four blocks up here. Go across, down, all the stuff. But we're actually going to not go down this corner and move it over here to put it down instead. This just makes it a little bit more open on the inside and it's just easier to access. So now you can just fill in the top here, nice and simple. And now with our white concrete, we're going to wrap around this area, go down over here and build a column at the corner. And you're gonna take this one and go all the way to the wall, but don't build another column down because that's cringe. Now, one block below that, we're going to take a little line 
bring it all the way around the wood here and bring it down at this corner. So we should have something that looks like this. Now you can fill in the floor up here with white concrete. And now we're actually going to go at one more block in the corner. Build up one, two, three, four to match. Bring it across, of course. You can actually connect this one up because that's not cringe. Then build this all the way back, connect it up with the wall. Build this one all the way alongside the white concrete area. Connect it up like that. And you can make yourself a little door on the side here. Build a cross like this and put some stairs. This opens basically up into a nice little balcony area. You can put a barbecue grill here, a bed if you're stupid. Can you tell that I've recorded this tutorial in two separate days? I can. So going back to the spruce over here, we're actually going to fill in all the walls just so you can't really walk in anytime you want. But on the front here, we're going to clear out a little space for a window. And I would clear out this space too, but we're actually going to have our jungle leaves on the side here. So what we're going to do now is bring this up two blocks tall all the way across the wall here, bring it out over our lanterns, and just fill in this whole space all the way to the back here. So this is going to be cordoning off our little garden area that we're going to put trees and ponds and everything in here, eventually. Now I'm going to be showing you how to make this garden look really nice, but if you have your own ideas to build one, feel free because I am by no means a gardener in Minecraft, I am just the architect. So in similar spirits, we're going to go over to the other lanterns now and fill in the rest of the leaves two blocks tall. And you can make it three blocks tall if you really want, but I think two blocks is not enough. Like, no one's really going to be peeping over, like, six meters. Or two meters of blocks. Six feet. But yeah, feel free definitely to make it three blocks tall. I just think it looks a bit too tall, and I think it just, it just kind of makes it suffocating inside here and not, like, open. So do as you wish. So now our top here is looking pretty open. And I would normally fill this in with white concrete, but I think it'd be even more nice if we just take polished blackstone slabs and go all the way around the outside. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're just going to be outlining the edge of our white concrete entirely with this blackstone. So this trick is super nice and I think it actually really helps in this style. And just go all the way around and it just gives it a, light, a nice little texture, a nice little depth. And I use it all the time now. So already it's looking a bit cooler, looking a bit fresher, looking a bit drippier. But actually in this section here, just to make it look nicer, we're going to fill in the rest of this so it's a more smooth transition. And now basically fill in everything else on the top here. And this is actually surprisingly easy to do in survival because blackstone spawns in these big chunks and you can just polish it really easy with like survival crafting. So this house is surprisingly not that difficult to make in survival. Because all these houses that I've shown in tutorials, I've made in survival first as proof of concept, but this one definitely took the least time. And speaking of the least time, we've already finished the roof area, so it should look something like this. So already we're seeing this house take shape. It's looking more and more like the one that I already promised you. So next on our bucket list, we're going to finish this room off here. We're just going to build a white concrete up to one, two, three, four, five blocks. Bring it across. You could bring it down here, but I think it looks better if you ignore that spot and just come over to this corner to put it down here instead. And put another column here, across, just making a nice little doorway. Bring this across again, a nice little doorway. And then bring this one across again. We're bringing a lot of stuff across, just making a little box. Not too complicated. Then here, actually, we're going to remove this column because we have to put some wood on this side. I'm going to put some wood on this side too. This side. This side, you get it. Bring it across, bring it across, bring it across, bring it. And you got yourself a box. This room looks a little bit messier than the rest, so I always just remove this column because I think it's not really needed in the full structure. And I'm going to show you a really cool trick with the wall on this one, actually. So originally, this is going to be a driveway. You can leave this to open if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as a window because you don't drive cars in Minecraft. What are you, crazy? Instead, I'm going to get birch stairs, and with these stairs, I'm going to fill in the wall. Make sure they're all facing the same way, so they don't look weird. And once you're done with it, the wall should have a nice little texture like this, just makes it much more interesting to look at. And actually, I might just do this with the front too. And if you want a window there, feel free. And if you actually want to go even crazier, you can put the corners like this to make it flow all the way through. And now we have a nice little really weird section here. Again. I wish we could do this with concrete, but we don't have concrete stairs or slabs, so we can't- Anyways, we're almost done with the structure now. We don't have much left to do. Uh, so, 
let's just finish what we can do. Down here at the bottom, every three blocks, we're going to put another column like this. So leave a three block space, leave a three block space, and leave a three block space like so. Build these up all the way to the top. And this always looked ugly, so I just put another line in here, making it indented. And on the front, instead of making this open, we're just going to close it off to the rest. And to make it symmetrical, we're going to do the same with the other side. Build it all the way back here. And we can also put a nice little white concrete column in the corner just to make it not look stupid. And fill in the rest of this area. Now with the other side, you can basically copy. So bring the ring around the top. Three blocks, three blocks, boom. Then you can build this one up, this one up. And this side, there's actually nothing to go to, so you can just fill that in with the concrete. And your hallway should look something like this. Just little little doors going off the side here, giving it a nice little feel. But yeah, now most of the other structural details are going to be nitpicks and preferences. Like this spot, I want the doorway to be flush, so I'll fill this in with spruce. This spot, I think that's too high, so I can actually replace it with um, spruce slabs. And it won't actually affect the top, since the top of spruce slabs are just the regular spruce blocks. So again, this is entirely preferential, you don't have to do any of this. I just think, it looks kinda cool. It looks kinda cool. I'm stupid, oh my god, I'm losing my mind. And our last little thing that I actually forgot about is a staircase on this corner. Because you don't want to have just a block here doing nothing, so... What we're actually going to do, we're going to go in here, we're going to count one, two, three blocks, and then on the fourth, make a nice little area two by three tall. On the sides here, you can put some white concrete, just outlining it all. So because we're at a different spot than our other staircase, we're going to have to fit this in a bit weird. So one block from the right of the door, we're going to build staircase up, staircase up, staircase up, but there's going to have to be glass here at some point. So instead of doing another staircase, we're going to do spruce slab here, another spruce slab up here, and then a staircase up to the top and we can build a nice little platform. Now you can connect this over here just so you can get through but you can still step on it and we're going to take our gray concrete and make a nice little space here and it's actually going to be directly above the other door. Now we can put some spruce planks in here and actually we can fill in the spruce all the way to the other end of this hallway, put some gray concrete here and now we have a nice little overlook to what's going to be our pool section. And right here in between these little concrete blocks, we're going to build another door out to this area. And if you want, you can make the doorway again. So with that completed, our main structure for the house is finished. Time to get on to the little details. The first of which is glass. We're going to need a lot of it, so let's take our black stained glass and our black stained glass panes. And we're just going to start filling stuff in. Starting with the gray concrete areas, fill in the top parts with the black stained glass. Then on the sides, use your stained panes to fill in this window. Then these big tall windows are also going to be stained panes. And the reason we didn't actually put staircases on the edges of this one is because staircases look super ugly when combined with stained panes, because the back of them is a full block. If I were going to make this a staircase, then I could come out here and place my stained panes, but oops, it connects on that, and that looks kind of ugly. So instead of that, we just compromise and say, I'll just put a slab. And coincidentally, both of these areas have overlooks, so we're just going to put one layer of glass here as a sort of railing, and here as well. So staying in this area, we're going to build a line of glass panes from the wall here, and just build it all the way across so you don't fall, the kids don't break their necks on the ground, and there's nowhere to end it here, so instead we'll just put a white concrete out here, here, and put some staircases. Then again, you don't want them to fall on this side either, so let's put some glass panes on the side of the banister. So when you're jumping off your staircases, you're going to have to jump a whole meter to get down. Now back this way, we're going to fill in these windows. And you finish this off with the skylight with the glass. This front window here needs a lot of glass to cover it. And it's always a pain, so when you're doing this, be very careful with your stained glass placement. Because if you break that, unless you got silk touch, you ain't getting it back. So now over here, you can actually have this as a door, but I want this as the door frame, so this can just be a window. On this side, because it's a door frame, you think you'd have no glass, but I actually like having glass on the sides here. And it kind of looks like the starts of a sliding door, but really it's just to give it some semblance of structure. Now directly above that, we're just going to have one line of glass acting as our banister on this balcony. And this balcony is right next to it, we're going to have another one layer of glass to act as a banister. I know there's two balconies directly next to each other, but it looks cool, so sue me. Now yet again, acting as a banister, we're going to have some glass starting from this column. We're going to build it out and down this line. 
Not like that. And it's just going to keep the kids from falling again down here into the pool, which you know they would want to do. So now back over here, we're going to fill in some more windows. And this window actually leads out onto this balcony. And we, we could fill in all of this with the glass, but I think it doesn't look the best. So we're just going to start from this block and build it across and then back. Then on this column, we're going to bring it back to this wall and conclude it. And that also kind of looks iffy. So if you want, you can break this one and bring it back just to this line here. Again, this is really lenient and you don't even have to have a balcony here if you don't want it. So coming back inside, we're going to fill in this big window all the way around here. This just goes up to the top and is filled in entirely with the glass. And this front part too. And all these little windows just need their own little glass. Not too big of a deal, but there's actually fewer windows than you'd expect in this house. A lot of spaces are just left open, intentionally so. So big red flag here, no floor. Why? Because we're going to use the glass to make the floor. That's crazy. At the front here, we're just going to do the other sliding glass technique that we did earlier. And just like that, that's literally all of the glass. Crazy. This house has very few windows compared to my other houses, and it's ironic because it's the most open of all of them. Now in this area here, we have an open space going to literally nothing. So what I like to do, I go one, two, three blocks back and put some gray concrete up. Then I break this bottom area, put some gray concrete at the bottom, and then I put some water that just goes all the way down. And I know it flows at the front here, but you can actually put glass to stop that. So we can start from the top just so it doesn't spill out. And boom, you got a nice little waterfall. And we could have that on this side, but I actually just like having a, a regular window here. It doesn't really need it. But the front here, it always looks kind of ugly to me. So I like to go in and just fill in the rest of this with the spruce. By that I mean just finishing the sides here. And I just go all the way out. And this top part, you can need the spruce slabs to fill in. But with that done, it just looks a lot cleaner, especially from the outside. Um, and you can fill in this spot here if you really want to, but that creates the glass thing, so I usually just never do that. And a cool trick that I just figured out I can do now is you can actually make a nice little pattern on the wall here, just to make it a little bit more interesting for passersby. So when the poor people gawk at your house, they can have something nice to look at. Then on this wall here, we're just going to build a nice little spot up with the glass. Not a sliding door, but just a little column because this feels pretty empty because we don't have a white concrete column there. But now, I think it's time for some gardening. So our first step is a pool area. So I'm going to fill in this spot with some polished andesite. Then out from here, I'm going to do one, two blocks and just bring it all the way around this area. And this two block little pathway is going to go and stop once we get to this column here. It's going to wrap around it and we're going to start two blocks this way again. And once we get to the wall, we can just finish our two block pathway all the way around. And in the middle, we're going to build a pool. So if, in, if you're in a regular survival world, you won't have this issue. But because I'm on a super flat, there is not much space before we hit the void. So we have to make room of it. That's so what I do is I take the first spot out like this and just basically take the entire thing down this level. Then I count one, two, three blocks and I take this spot out. And then I count one, two, three blocks and take this spot out. And this pool, uh, coincidentally, is nine blocks long. So it's three, three, and three. So now we're going to need another block to fill in the rest of this. So I like to use lapis lazuli. That's pretty expensive if you don't have fortune. So you can just use andesite if you want. But you just basically take the bottom of this area and fill it all in with that. And that way, no one's going to be falling into that void section. So I'm going to fill in these walls with it too. These walls could talk. They'd say, damn, I look good. And now you can take your lighting block and you can put in some lights at the bottom of the pool, like so. You don't have to put them here, but I think they look kind of nice. And then just fill in the rest of the water. Actually, I'm going to do something called the fill command, which is a super, super duper nice command. If you know how to use it, where you just put in some coordinates like this and type in what you want to fill. And it should just do that. If you didn't understand that, that's fine. You can just fill it in with water buckets. I might even do a tutorial on the fill command later, but I'm pretty sure there's people who have done it better than I could. So now that this area is done, you have a nice little space of lawn that you can really do whatever with. I didn't design anything for this. I just put some bamboo on the side. 
And bamboo tends to look really nice when you do it like this. Just along the edge of your lawn, just put some like that. It's a nice little it's a nice little addition to your home. So if my random tick speed is this high, I actually have to do it pretty fast. But if I do it right, boom, big tree. And these look super duper nice, especially combined with this modern aesthetic. Jungle, I think, is the most modern of all the woods or all the uh, forest types. So combining your house with some jungle elements will really, really add it a pop that it needs. So now for this front area, I'm going to add a little pond. So I'm going to take some gravel and sand. I didn't pick them up in the right order, but I'm going to use these to make a little area here. And I'm just going to build it uh, around the tree and just kind of make a little space to put some water. I think this does pretty well, so I'm going to fill in the bottom with sand. And it looks something like this. That's kind of boring, so we're going to take gravel and make a little patch. And we're just going to fill in some on the side here. You can make it look as organic as you want. Um, you can even like go out on the edges here with your sand and gravel, just like fill in some spots. It doesn't have to look perfect because it's just kind of a little bit of nature. Nature, that thing that every gamer knows what it is, and no one's confused. Everyone here goes outside, right? You should definitely go outside. But anyways, we're going to fill in this middle part with water. And sure, that's a nice little pond area, but it's lacking something. So let's put a few lily pads on here. And then for lighting, we can take chains and lanterns, I prefer soul lanterns, and we can actually hang them from the top of our tree. If you don't have these, you can just use torches because these are actually pretty expensive and hard to do. But I just prefer using these. And they're actually really difficult to put in creative mode because I can barely see them and it's really, really small and they should definitely make it easier. I'm like actually really struggling here. Once you get to a reasonable height, I'd say just put a soul lantern on there and you can make a few more. And I just have a few lanterns coming down here and it just makes it look so, so nice. So now we're going to take sugarcane, very, very easy to get in survival. And just put some along the side and just take my favorite flowers, Lily of the Valleys, plant some on the side here. And just like that, we have a very, very cool garden area just outside our house. Again, I'm not a gardener, so this probably looks like garbage to actual gardeners in Minecraft, but it's a start. But yeah, after you're done with that, you're basically done with the whole house. I'm clearing my inventory, that's how confident I am. And wow, what a house this is. It is super open, super versatile, super complex, and super pretty. And again, I thank you for watching this house tutorial. I take so much time to make these because I want them to be as best as they possibly can. If you appreciate the work I put into this or you like the house, just make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified of my later houses and music. Yes, I make music. And like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. So anyways, make sure to check out the rest of my videos and um, what's my outro again?